Hello everyone, I am Ashan R. Hampton, English instructor, writer, editor, proofreader, digital content creator, web designer. Did I leave anything out? <laughs> when it comes to writing and digital media, those are my passions. So today I want to show you how to make a slideshow video with a Ken Burns effect. Basically how to take still photographs and make them look like they're moving across the screen. And I'm also going to show you how to set it to music so that you can make your own slideshow videos that perhaps you will put on YouTube as I always do, or use them in their classroom or for marketing purposes, whatever. So here's a quick tutorial on how to do it. So I'm not going to edit this and make it look all pretty. I'm just going to show you step by step how to do it in real time. So I already have Camtasia 9 open and it's already open to a new project. What you want to do is to import media. So make sure the media tab is clicked and import media. The folder I want to use is already open, but you navigate to the folder where you have the photos that you want to use. And so I'm going to hit the control button and click all of the photos that I want to use in this slideshow. Okay. And click open. So I have four photos that I'll use for this demonstration. They are now in your media bin. You want to now get them on your timeline. Easy peasy. Decide which one you want to place first. And you can rearrange them on the timeline, but I just like to already know what I want on the timeline first. So you right click on the photo and it says add to timeline at playhead. Of course, this is your playhead. So you want to move your playhead over to the end of this photo with just a little bit of overlap here and place the second one. Again, move your playhead over a little bit so that it overlaps a little bit. You don't want the black to show. So you want a smooth transition from one picture to the other. Right click that picture. Click Add to Timeline at Playhead. Again, move your playhead over. Right click, Add to Timeline at Playhead. So now, all of your pictures, if you were to go all the way to the beginning, all of your pictures are in the order that you place them in. And we're letting it play here a little bit so that you can show that it's going from picture to picture. Okay. The next thing you want to check is the duration of each photo. So click a photo and then it shows you right here if you hover over it five seconds. But you can right click it and click duration and you can set the number of seconds that you want it to appear. I'm going to put 10 seconds for each photo since we're going to set this to music. And we don't want it to go too fast. So just type in 10. Right click, duration, type in 10. And scroll up. Last photo, duration 10, and click OK. If you want a little bit more space on that timeline, raising this up, as you can see, resizing the window gives us a little bit more room on the timeline. Okay, so all of our pictures are set to 10 seconds. Now we need to do a little bit to realign them so that they won't overlap. That's okay, we can do that right quick. 
and I'm putting the timeline at the end of each photo like I showed you before. Okay. Again, as long as the it doesn't black out, then we're fine. You want to make sure that all of your pictures are filling the space, which will be the size of your video. The way to check this is to click the dimension arrow, click project settings. We want to post this to YouTube, so we want it at 720 HD. But if you click the drop down, you see that you have a variety of selections here. So let's make sure we click that and click apply. This is the background uh, color. So we want to keep it at black and click apply. All right. So we just want to scroll through very quickly and make sure that the pictures are within the, ba the bounding box here and not outside of the bounding box. Right, that's fine. Okay, so we've got the basics down. Let's add some transitions. So we're just going to do a regular fade like you see oftentimes with the Ken Burns effect. You can use whatever transition you want, but I'm going to use fade on all of them. So you're gonna drag the transition effect you want and you'll see it lighting up in yellow. I want it towards the end of this clip. So you're going to place it towards the end of the clip and you see that it turned a little green there. And you're just going to do this on all of your clips. Just put it towards the end. You can also, if you click it, if you put it towards the middle of the photo, you'll see that it's at the beginning and the end of the photo. So I'll leave that one there just to show you how that effect will go. And let's see, I'll do it again here. So we have two pictures with the transition towards the end and two, pic uh, two pictures with the transition of fate at the beginning and the end of the clip. So let's just see how that looks. Okay, so that's decent. You can see it playing here and there is no motion on the pictures yet, but that fade is working. You just saw it at the beginning and now it's at the end of the clip to fade into the next photo. Okay, gentle fade there, that's fine. So let's stop it and you always wanna move your playhead wherever you're working in your project. So I wanna go back to the beginning here. We have transitions um, here. The next thing we wanna do is to put in the zoom and pan effect to make it look like it's moving a little bit. So let's go to animations. Make sure the zoom and pan tab is clicked. Right. You also want to make sure that the bounding box covers the entire photograph. Okay. So we have it hovered over this clip. You'll take the right handle here. You just hover your mouse over that right bottom handle and you want to drag it up towards the top. Wherever you want it, we'll say here, towards the top. And release it. Now that you have a section selected, you want to move it towards the bottom right. Let's say about right here, wherever you want the effect to stop, okay? As you can see, an arrow has been placed over this photograph. In order for the effect to um, cover the whole photo, you want to drag that little ball and arrow 
to the end of the clip. So it's going to start at the very beginning of the clip. As you can see, it stretches across the entire clip. Let's click play to see what it looks like. So that picture is in motion from the very beginning to the end of that clip. And it fades into the next picture. So let's say I don't want it to start at the very beginning. Then I can take that little ball there and move it towards the midpoint of the clip. So now the viewer gets to see that picture, enjoy it for a moment, and then it begins to move. Okay. So now that you have the effect that you want, you can click this little gold arrow. You can copy it. You can now hover over the next photo and you want to click the photo so that that little yellow orange bounding box appears to show you that it has been selected and click paste. Move the effect wherever you want it in the clip. Again, we'll move it towards the midpoint to the end. Do the same thing with the rest of the photos. You want to copy. You can also right click that arrow and click copy. Click your next photo, right click it, and hit paste. You get that little warning message there. Okay. Press Control V or click the paste icon. So let's click the paste icon. That's a good little warning there because I didn't have it over the clip that I wanted it pasted onto. Very good. I'm going to leave this one at the beginning of the clip a little bit just so that you can see what it looks like uh, if you place it a little closer to the beginning of the clip. Then let's stretch it out here. All right, move your playhead over the photo, click it so that it is selected, and click paste again. And this one we will move all the way over to the end of the clip. So you can position it wherever you want. And when you move that little arrow, you can see what the movement of the photo will be like. Okay. Okay. You can also, let's say, for this particular arrow, let's say we want to move it up a little bit so that um, that shows and it created another little double arrow. So let's take a look to see which one we want to keep. It's moving. It's moving towards the bottom. Okay. So let's delete that arrow and keep this one. So let's take a look at how these will move. I'm not going to play the whole thing, just these two clips so that you get an idea of how you can add the uh, motion effect to your clips with the zoom and pan. Very nice. Okay, so let's go back to the very beginning. We have a nice little slideshow going here. So let's get some music in here. So let's go back to the media bend, bin. And you can also click this add button and it says import media. Or you can go to the menu, file, import, and click media. So those are the ways that you can import media. I already have a groovy little track here. Click open. It will appear here in the media bin. Right click it. Okay. 
it says to add to timeline at playhead. That's why we put the playhead at the very beginning, right? And so it moves it here with the music. So let's just take a moment to see what it's like. Yes, with the music. I love that groovy little music. Okay. So right here, I think we need that fade effect at the beginning. So let's go back to transitions, fade effect. And I want it right here at the beginning of that clip, just to give it a little smoother um, transition. So let's see what it looks like now that I've done that. Yes, now there is a bit of a smoother transition there. Okay, very nice. So if you want to turn the music down just a little bit, you see this little green uh, circle here? Pull that down and it will adjust the volume of your clip. Now we're down to 70%. Let's take a listen so that you can see how the sound has been reduced. So it's not as loud as it was before. Now notice that this music is a lot longer than our uh, clip of pictures. So let's go ahead, this is to resize the timeline. Make it a little bit smaller. Just drag the music track all the way down. And this is when the music, the playhead comes in handy. Let's drag it to the end of the video clip and just drag the music there, right? So now the music stops right when the slideshow of pictures stop. Okay, very good. And you can see that this clip is about 35 seconds or so long, 40 seconds. You can see the exact uh, length of time of the clip, duration of the um, slideshow right here as well. So we're at 40 seconds, which is fine. You can also resize your timeline and make the elements just a little bit bigger. Okay, let's say I want to check out some audio effects. What can I do with this audio? Let's click audio effects. Okay. I want a fade in so that the music comes in gradually. So I'm going to put it at the beginning of the clip and you can see that there is a gradual, um, raise in volume there and I want it to fade out. So let's put this at the end of the clip. So now if you take a listen, Starts in low and gets louder. Let's take a listen to the fade out. It gradually tells off. Okay, the one last tip I have about your photos is to make sure that you have already made them all the same size. So this is going to be a YouTube video, 1280 by 720. I sized all of these photos in Photoshop to 1280 by 720. So you want to make sure that all of the photos you use in the slideshow are the same dimensions. And as I'm hovering over this, you can see that all of these pictures are 1280 by 720. They all have the same dimensions. Okay. And I'm using music. YouTube has a whole library of music that is royalty free. Some of the artists do not require you to give them uh, copyright notations on your videos, but it's always a good idea to give credit where credit is due. I got this music clip from bensound.com who does like for you to give him credit for his groovy little beats and I don't blame him. But that's it. Now you have a great slideshow. The last thing you need to do is to um, save it down to a video format. 
so you can choose a local file so that you can post it on your own. I tried to do YouTube. It's very particular about your YouTube account, um, especially if it's longer than 10 minutes. I've had my YouTube channel for a very long time, so I can post videos longer than 10 minutes. But if you're new to YouTube, you can only post videos that are 10 minutes or less. So I like to create a local file and I'm not going to do that here because it will start to publish and mix down the video, which can take quite a few minutes. But the good thing about Camtasia 9 is that it goes a little bit faster to publish the video than previous versions. Okay, that's it. Now you know how to make a slideshow video from your photos with that Ken Burns-like effect. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and happy learning.